In today's episode of Correcting Your Work, I'm going to correct this C2 proficiency proposal. Now, proposals aren't that often part of the final Cambridge examinations, but they do appear in books and it's very useful to practice your formal writing while proposing some solutions to a problem. So this is our assignment and it says your local council is proposing to ban all cars from the town center because of problems with traffic, pollution and accidents. However, the following comments were made at a public meeting to discuss the situation. So you have someone who says, my car is the only way I have of taking my children to school safely and quickly. We have someone else who says, the shops in, town, in the town center will close because people will go elsewhere to do their shopping. And the public transport here is dreadful. We can't rely on it and it's too expensive. The local council is inviting people to send in proposals in which they express their views on the council's plans and offer possible solutions to people's concerns. Write your proposal. So if we go to the paper I received to review, we can see that it is between the 240 and 280 range, 243 words, which is fine, I guess. We have three paragraphs and I already see a few issues with this uh, proposal. So the first thing I see is that we don't have a very clear introduction and we don't have something like a conclusion. Now usually proposals also need their headers, so we don't have headers here as well. So it does need some work regarding layouts. Then I also see that this person has chosen to write about the problems and solutions in each paragraph separately, which is fine. I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to start with the problems and then list the uh, proposed solutions. Because I think that gives a better way to practice well-structured paragraphs. Now the first thing we're going to add is an introduction. Because we need something that introduces this topic to us, the reader. Now remember, proposals are written in formal English. So we need to make sure that we use formal English throughout this work. And even when we're proposing solutions, we want to use formal English. So keep that in mind while I'm making these changes. So we're first going to add our introduction. And I need to introduce my introduction with a header and I'm simply going to say introduction. And very important, if you're on your C2 proficiency exam and you're writing something that is like a proposal that needs a header, make sure that you underline your headers to indicate that they are the header. So that's a very important tip you definitely need to remember on your exam. So I've added the header introduction and I'm going to add an introduction but that's also the thesis statement. Because we only have 280 words, I don't want to make a very large introduction. So I'm simply going to add my thesis statement and make that the introduction of this proposal. So the thesis statement of my proposal can be something that starts with the aim of this proposal is to do something. So I'm going to add the aim of this proposal is to express concerns regarding the council's plan to ban all cars from the town center and to offer possible solutions to these concerns to these concerns now i deliberately chose the words express and uh, offer possible solutions because if we have a look at our task, which is here upon the screen, we can see that in the final part of the task, we get these, um, these verbs as well. So we get express their views on the council's plans and offer possible solutions to people's concerns. So I literally copied this from the task into my introduction and into my thesis statement. That's very useful and something to do. So as I mentioned, I'm going to change the structure of this proposal from problem, solution, problem, solution to problems in one paragraph and all solutions in another paragraph. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a header to my problems paragraph. And I'm going to call it objections to the council's plans because that's what we need to express first. Then we get our first sentence of our first paragraph. Absolutely, we can't ban private cars, either public transport. Now, I don't know what this means. And that means that this, this sentence impedes understanding. So we need to change a few things in this sentence 
to make sure that it fits the context of the paragraph. We also need to have a good topic sentence. So I'm going to add a topic sentence first and then build this sentence or build this idea that we can't ban private cars entirely uh, into my paragraph. Now what I want to do is I want to show that I understand that there's a problem, which means that I need to have what I call a linking phrase. And I'll add this linking phrase as follows. My topic sentence is that in this case, although the number of cars in the town center is problematic and leads to increased traffic, pollution and accidents, banning all cars is not the right solution as it directly influences individuals and could negatively affect the town center's economy. So I've included some nice words here as well. I have the verb affect, I have um, influences, I have problematic, right? Which means that it is a problem. And I've also added the adverb negatively to create a nice chunk negatively affects. So that means that we can take out this sentence. As I said, this person is now proposing a solution, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to state my other problems first. So I need to look for the other problems as well. And then we go to the second paragraph where this person said that we must encourage them. I probably think people or users of drivers of cars by reducing the price of bus tickets. Um, because many of our complaining public transport is too expensive. So public transport is considered expensive. Um, and I need to add that after my topic sentence. So in my, first in my first paragraph, I have a very good topic sentence that introduces a topic and acknowledges that we as proposal writers understand that there's something that needs to be done. Um, and now I need to build on a topic sentence by really adding my arguments. I've already said that it directly influences individuals and it could negatively affect the town center's economy. So now I need to add all of this into this paragraph. So what I'm going to do is first mention that people need to use their car as a way of transportation because they need to bring their kids to school because that's a very important issue and topic discussed. So I'll add something like a privately owned car was mentioned as the only way of transportation as families need their cars to take their children to school quickly and safely. And the public transport system is unreliable and expensive. So now I've covered both things that were mentioned in that discussion. Um, we have people using the cars and the public transport being dreadful. Now, I also want to add the argument made by entrepreneurs who said that people might go elsewhere to do their shopping, which might result in shops closing in the town center. So I'm going to add a linking word here, which people at Cambridge really like. So you want to add your linking words. So I'm going to add moreover to indicate that I'm going to say more about the things I've previously said, or I'm going to add to that. So what I want to say is that, that, that people who own shops and people who run businesses said that these might close. So I'm going to say that entrepreneurs, which is a nice B1 word, pointed out, which is a nice B1 verb, that outlawing, which is a nice C1 verb, cars from the town center directly means hampering access to the town center. This leads to a decrease in the number of shoppers and revenue for the town center's shops. People will choose other easier accessible towns to do their shopping. So now I've added three sentences that build on this idea of people uh, moving out to different cities to do their shopping and thus resulting in um, shops closing. Now what I could do to increase the level of this work is I could connect two sentences and create a very long complex sentence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this, this, and I'm changing this into leading. 
So instead of saying this leads, I'm going to say leading to a decrease um, to indicate that I'm able to use language and create a difficult complex sentence structure. So now I've created a long paragraph with all the problems discussed and I have my topic sentence, my level two sentences, I have some examples and I included a linking word, moreover, which I'm going to make yellow. I also have a very nice vocabulary. Um, I have entrepreneurs, which is a B1 word, a B2 word. I have pointed out, which is also a B2 verb. I have outlawing, which means that something's prohibited by law to do something, um, which is a nice C1 word. I've also included some other words like hampering and revenue. Now we need to build our second paragraph and our second paragraph is really going to be our paragraphs with our solutions. Um, and that's going to be the things that we're going to propose, hence the part of our proposal. So as always, we need to start with our header. And I'm going to choose for a header like, uh, that's going to be simple, proposed solutions. Now we have some very good solutions here. We have, therefore, we would like to propose to use 50 to 50 private cars and public transport, which I think is meant to include the idea that we want 50-50 private cars and public transport. We can refer people to that by getting some actions. Some people have their private cars to take their children to school safely and quickly. I can remove that because I've already mentioned that in my first paragraph, so I can remove this part. For that kind of people have no choice, that is the only way, which I can also take out because that builds on the private um, car owners who want to take the children to school. But some people can use private school buses and public transport to take their children to school, which is a nice solution as well. So I definitely want to include that. Then we get the idea that we must encourage them by reducing the price of bus tickets, which I think is a very good solution as well. Um, because many are complaining that public transport is too expensive. I've already mentioned that. Not only reducing the public price, uh, the price of public transport, we should also make it reliable, a reliable and safe environment in public transportation. We can make it by getting the help of the police. All right, so now we have a concluding sentence here, 50-50 private cars, minimize the problems at the town center with traffic, pollution and accidents. I'm going to take this sentence out as well. And then we have the, the shops in the town center issue that they will close. Uh, the shops in the town center close because people go elsewhere to do the shopping, which is something I've already mentioned. Regarding that problem, we have to remove all illegal constructions in the middle of town. Last problems that town centers are pollution and accidents. We can make awareness programs about pollution and accidents. can make posters and banners and share leaflets, which I think is a very nice solution. There are steps that we can get to stop pollution and accidents. As a responsible citizen, all of us have a responsibility to make a beautiful town center. So even though we have some very good solutions, there are some language issues we need to solve here. So let's start with the solutions and building the paragraphs. What we want to do is we want to link together the first paragraph, which is our problems, and our second paragraph, which is going to be our solutions. And we can simply say something like, however. So... I'm going to include however, because we talked about problems in our previous paragraph and we're now going to talk about solutions. And however is a nice linking word to show this contrast. So, however, and now we need to say what we're going to do. Um, in this case, we are going to include some solutions. So I'm going to say, however, the following proposals could be taken into consideration. This is a nice linking word to show that I'm now going to introduce some proposals. The first thing I'm going to discuss is that we want to encourage people to use public transportation. And I'm going to start by saying first, which is a very nice linking word as well. So first. So what I've done here is I've added the sentence first. People could be encouraged to use public transport by reducing the price of pub bus tickets and making public transport a reliable and safe means of transportation. And means is a B2 word as well, so that's a nice one to include. 
Um, I've also used the passive construction here. People could be encouraged because I want to show that I'm an advanced user of English, or in this case, even proficient user of English. And using the passive is a very nice way to do that. Now, I also want to include a thing about using asking the police for help. So I can say that by adding, this can be done with the help of the police. Now, this is a bit wordy. And I can make it shorter by saying, this can be done with police assistance. I think this is a very nice first solution that we are proposing here. Then we need to add the second one, which is about the 50-50 private cars thing. So what I need to do is I need to explain that we're going to get there in some way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that um, we have a second thing. So I'm going to use the linking word second. And we, how do we get this 50-50 division between private cars and public transport? Well, I think we need to do that with regulation. So I'm going to say second, some regulations could be put into place so I can remove this second sentence here and I've added a very nice sentence that basically covers everything regarding the 50-50 division between public transportation and privately owned cars and I've added nice C2 vocabulary as well I've also added a nice C2 verb or C2 phrasal verb, which is stir in two, which means that you kind of guide people in a particular direction. And what this um, regulation could do is guide people into the fact that they choose to go with public transport instead of their own privately owned car. So now we have this left, which is about um, the awareness programs. And I definitely want to include that in this paragraph as well. So we have this thing about re encouraging them by reducing the price, which we've included. And now we have the awareness program. So we get the sentence, we can make awareness programs about pollution and accidents, can make posters and banners and can share leaflets. Now, again, I did first and second, so I need to include the third. So I'm going to start with third. We can make awareness programs, which is fine, but it is informal. I want to keep this very formal level throughout my proposal. So I don't want to use first person plural here. So I want to avoid that. Um, and I also have this very nice sentence. They are steps to we can get. So what I can do is I can combine these sentences into something like this. So we'll start with awareness programs about pollution and accidents, posters and banners, and then we'll add comma and leaflets are steps to stop pollution and accidents. As a responsible citizen, all of us have a responsibility to make a beautiful town center. Now, this is okay. I think we have a very nice sentence here as well, but I do want to add a few extra things because we need to be realistic and saying that these things will stop pollution and accidents is a bit naive. So I'm going to add that these things don't stop them, but lower them. So I'm going to say, to lower pollution and the number of accidents. Then we have this very nice sentence with the responsible citizen part. And the only thing we need to do is add a comma here. And we could change this part with have a responsibility and make it into our responsible for maintaining the beautiful town center. So this is our third paragraph, which is our solutions. Um, and you know, we can add with an extra sentence that says, hopefully, comma, these proposals will be taken into 
consideration. Now this is not, of course, the best conclusion, but I only have five words left. So I think this would have been the best option if you really had 280 words. If you had more words, you could definitely add more to your introduction and to this concluding sentence. And you could even add a header here as well. Um, and, you know, make it a ro nice round summary of everything you've discussed. Um, and end it a bit broadly so that you can put it into a nice context. Now, these are the changes I would make to this proposal. And as you can see, I've changed a lot. But it has to do with the way I structured it. I went from the problem-solution structure to this problems paragraph and solutions paragraph. Now, one thing you could definitely do when you're doing something like this is include those linking words. And I'll put a link in the description with a nice file with an overview of all these linking words. So these were the changes I would make to this proposal. If you want me to have a look at one of your writings, contact me on one of my socials, which you can find in the description. If you found this video useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing if you want to know when my next video will be out. For now, thank you for watching, happy writing, and I hope to see you in one of my next videos.